Remember back in 2008-ish when these tools started appearing all over the place? It seemed like every brand was releasing their own version of the oscillating multi-tool all at once. That's because 2008 was when the patents expired for the original oscillating multi-tool, which was an idea that was so good that all the other brands had that date marked on their calendars years in advance so they could release their own. You probably have one of these in your shop or garage now, but do you know how to properly use it? A lot of folks think they know all there is to know about this tool. I used to think so myself, but I was using it wrong for years. It wasn't until I took the time to learn more about how this tool functions and about the different types of blades and cutting techniques that I was able to fully unlock all of its capabilities and dramatically change the way I use my tool. I'm gonna to share some of what I've learned over the years with you in this video. Some of this, some of you may already know a little bit about, but I guarantee if you stick with me, you're gonna find some tips that are just gonna make you smack yourself in the forehead and you will never look at your oscillating multi-tool the same way again. I don't care how long you've been using it. Let's start with one of the biggest game changers about this type of tool, the ability to make plunge cuts. I see a lot of folks just sticking the end of the tool on something like they're stabbing it with a knife. That's fine, especially if you need a really small cut. But I suggest you give yourself a little more control by starting with just the corner of the blade. This will help you penetrate the surface more cleanly and precisely without this skipping around that could potentially mar the surface of your material. You may even use the corner to first create a shallow scoring cut, especially if you're just trying to follow a line because you'll be able to make small adjustments that way. As you cut deeper, the kerf itself will help guide your blade and the angle blade can better eject the dust from the kerf. This will speed up the cut and it'll keep the teeth cooler so they won't dull as quickly. Another way to better control the cut is to use a block of wood as a guide. This will not only serve as a straight edge, but it will also help keep the tool plumb. A little sandpaper on the underside of the block will also make it easier for you to hold it in place as you work. Of course, just because you're holding your tool perpendicular to a surface doesn't mean it's going to cut straight into the wood. If it's dull, or if you try to force the cut faster than it wants to, the blade may flex and drift. Let the tool do the work, especially when you're plunging into thick materials where it's difficult for the dust to come out of the cut. Dust clogged teeth are naturally going to want to cut more slowly. You have to let them. If you try to force the tool forward, it's going to drift inside the cut. Of course, not every cut has to be perfect, but chances are you do want to hit your mark with at least some accuracy. Notice how I'm putting my fingers on the tool and on the surface of the wood to help guide the blade into its starting position. Don't be afraid to touch the oscillating head. It's not gonna hurt you as long as you don't put your fingers directly between the teeth and the wood. Of course, controlling your tool is easier if you can actually see what you're trying to cut. Turning the tool upside down can sometimes get the bulk of the body out of your line of sight and make your work a lot easier. And don't be afraid to change the angle of the blade if that makes the cut more comfortable or if it helps you to get up in a tight space. They're adjustable for a reason. Now you may notice that some plunge blades have scales on them to gauge the depth of your cut. These are handy at first, but they're difficult to see and they wear off quickly. I find that a piece of tape works better because it lasts longer and it's easier to see than the marks on the blade. Some plunge blades have extended wings. These are designed to reduce heat and they can also give you some extra clearance to maneuver in the hole but they may also be used to make curved cuts and thin materials if you turn it sideways and use it much like a jigsaw. You could even grind away some more material behind one of the wings and cut slightly tighter curves in slightly thicker materials. While narrow blades are great for plunge cuts, wide blades will help you track a straight line better. My favorite straight cutting blades are the half circles. They just track straight with little effort and they work especially well for making large cutouts in wood or drywall. They're also a great choice for cutting round objects like pipe because they're less likely to slip off like a narrow straight blade might. Cutting metal with an oscillating multi-tool does require a little different technique. For one thing, speed is not your friend because harder materials generate more friction and heat and heat's what kills your blades. So always turn down the speed of the tool when you're cutting metal and use less force. Again, let the tool do the work, don't rush it. Incidentally, the same is true for wood. 
Use slower tool speeds and less pressure for hardwood than you would for softwood like pine. And use the right blade for the job. I'll put a link below this video to a multi-pack of blades. They're not from a sponsor. It's just what I use because I like to have a variety on hand and it's a good price for decent quality. We can make a whole video about the different types of blades and how to use them, but today I'm just going to give you a quick rundown so you can make more sense of them. Wood cutting blades feature larger teeth and more space between them than a metal cutting blade. This clears the sawdust from the kerf more efficiently, which allows you to make faster cuts with less heat buildup. Many plastics can also be cut with wood cutting blades. Some wood blades have extra long teeth, featuring what's called a triple grind. These are also sometimes called Japanese style blades, and they help clear the dust even more efficiently, so they'll cut even more quickly than standard wood teeth. The points are also ground at a shallower angle for greater durability and for a cleaner cut. In fact, this is my favorite type of blade for wood cutting. Metal cutting blades feature shorter teeth and more of them for taking tiny bits from harder materials. They also have a slightly different shape to them, which stands up better to metal. Bimetal blades are perhaps the most confusing for a lot of folks, and some manufacturers aren't all that consistent with how they use the term, but the name usually means they're made from two types of metal. The body is sometimes spring steel, which can flex without developing cracks, while the thin strip along the cutting edge is often a harder high-speed steel for greater durability. Keep in mind, like I said, some manufacturers are inconsistent, so not all two-piece blades like this are bimetal. Look for a label to be sure. Now, if you're just cutting soft, non-ferrous metals like aluminum or copper, pretty much any metal cutting blade with fine teeth is going to do the job. But bimetal blades will also cut iron and steel. So while they're more expensive, they can cut more materials. Bimetal blades are also often used for cutting wood that's likely to contain metal, such as nails. Now, this isn't a perfect solution because bimetal blades usually have fine metal cutting teeth, so they're going to cut slowly and build up more heat in thick wood. But that compromise in speed may be worth it if you think there's metal in the wood. Keep in mind that while a bimetal blade will cut through a nail, drywall and construction screws can wreck them pretty quickly because those are much harder. Perhaps an even better hybrid blade then is one with carbide teeth. Not only will carbide stay sharp much longer, but it won't get wrecked if you cut through a screw. In fact, because of their greater durability and heat resistance, I think carbide tooth blades are the best all-purpose blade out there, not just for metal, but also for plastics and even some wood. Of course, the downside is that carbide tooth blades are not really designed for the most efficient cuts in wood. They have fine teeth and that sacrifices speed. So if you have a lot of wood to cut, especially thick boards, I still prefer the speed and efficiency of a proper wood cutting blade. Now to be clear, I'm speaking about blades with carbide teeth like this one, not about those that are coated with carbide chips like these. This abrasive style blade, which also comes with diamond chips, are for tile and concrete, and that's a rabbit hole we just don't have time to go down in this video. But I do want to briefly touch on scrapers. These are super handy for all sorts of things, especially removing glues and adhesives. But you don't really need to buy them. You could just use your regular blades when they get dull. You can even file a sharp edge on them. I also know some will ask me about the sander attachments. I think the tight range of motion that are common to these tools really make them poor power sanders. They're just slow and inefficient. But for some really tight spots, the little sanding heads could get you out of a bind. Just be careful if you're finished sanding wood, because these tools are notorious for leaving those little pigtail swirls that don't show up until after you put the finish on. Really, I think the sanding attachments are best suited for rougher work, like paint removal or removing rust and other burrs from metal, that sort of thing. If you do use a sander attachment, keep in mind that your random orbit sander discs usually wear out along the outside faster than in the center. So if you have a disc that's still got some grit in the middle, you can trim it and use it on your oscillating tools sander pad. This works especially well with the smaller finger sanders, which can fit between the hole patterns. One more tip. When you're done with your tool, turn the blade backwards for storage. This may seem obvious to some, but it actually took me a while to figure that out. And I've seen a lot of these tools tossed around in toolboxes and drawers with the blade forward where it can cause damage 
or be damaged. In the future, I may make a follow-up video about what to look for in a good oscillating multi-tool. Mine's a cordless Makita, but there are other good ones out there. Now, one more thing. Ridge Carbide is the best cut secret in woodworking. I kid you not, their saw blades are second to none, both in quality and performance, and they're less expensive than the other ultra-premium brands. Do yourself a favor. Use the link and the discount code below this video. You will never go back to cheap blades again.